Hello, and welcome back. If you are just joining me today, hi, I'm Miss Benita, and I teach and live in Seattle, Washington. And like you, I'm at home today with my cat, Ruby, and my cat, Claude. Today, we're going to return to our unit of study, ecosystem restoration. The last video, we looked at the beginning of this unit. Today, we're going to look at the second lesson in the first chapter, Introducing Ecosystems. At our last video, we looked at the different kinds of ecosystems to think about what are in these ecosystems. Then we looked at a simulation. This simulation uh, showed a different ecosystem and the different parts of an ecosystem. Then we looked at ecologists and learned that ecologists are scientists that study the ecosystem. This video is in three parts. We have three activities. And in the packet, the pages that you will use today are pages nine through 14. Let's get started. Remember, in this unit, we are taking on the role of ecologists, scientists who study ecosystems. Ecologists observe ecosystems to draw conclusions about them. Let's take a look at this word, ecosystem. I've broken it apart here for us. Let's take a look at that first part. Eco is Greek for house. And system can be thought uh, up of individual parts that when brought together, make a whole. So take your hands and your fingers, wave them together like this and put them together. That's a system, it works together. The definition of ecosystem is a place where animals and plants live together in their environment. Now let's take a look at this. What part represents eco? Yeah, the environment. It's the home, right? And what about the parts? What are the parts of the environment? Yes, the animals and the plants. All right, let's go. Today we will learn about a problem with the ecosystem in Costa Rica. We can see from this map that Costa Rica is a country in Central America. Is your family from Central America? Mine is. My mother and father were born and raised in Mexico. Do you know someone from Costa Rica? If you do, write down some of your thoughts on page nine. This is a photograph of an ecosystem in Costa Rica. What kind of ecosystem do you think this is? What organisms, living things might live here? This is a photo of the Costa Rican rainforest ecosystem. And here are some of the organisms that live there. This is the Cecropia tree. I have trouble pronouncing that word. Millipede, tree, three-toed sloth. That's another one. Try saying that fast several times, right? Soil and jaguars. I had a student once from Honduras and she helped me learn how to say the word jaguar in Spanish. It's jaguare. Can you say that? Jaguare. It's a beautiful word. As ecologists, we will work with Natural Resources Rescue, a group that protects and saves fragile ecosystems around the world. We have a project report from the group about a problem in part of the Costa Rican rainforest. For the next few weeks, we will think about how to solve this problem. Let's take a look at what they found. The project area used to be a healthy rainforest. Then cattle ranchers burned down the rainforest so they could use the land to graze their cows. What are the advantages and disadvantages of such an action? 
You may want to talk that over with a family member and record your thoughts in your packet. This photo shows the same project area today. A few years ago, the cattle ranchers left and took the cows with them. They planted trees so the area could become a rainforest again. The group worked with local volunteers to replant the project area. They brought in young Cecropia trees and other important rainforest plants and planted them. Our job is not done though. We needed to see how the area was recovering. Let's look at some information comparing the project area to a healthy rainforest area nearby. The area nearby was not burned for cattle ranching and it's in its original state. This table compares the numbers of several organisms in two areas. What do you notice about this table? I'm going to start here at the bottom and notice that we are studying the same size of an area in our project area and in the healthy rainforest. It's really important to keep that information uh, the same. You can follow along as well in your packet on page 10. This column shows the organisms counted in the project area and this column shows the number in the healthy rainforest. What are you, what are you noticing? Yeah, there are fewer animals and fewer trees in the project area. This is another table that shows the average weights of the animals in both the project area and the healthy rainforest. What do you notice from this table's data? The jaguars and the sloths weigh less in the project area than in the healthy area. This is a report from the group that we're working with, Natural Resource Rescue, and they plan to restore the section of the ecosystem and improve its health. They want us to help them investigate why the animals aren't growing and thriving in the project area. That's based on the, that's based on the data. And then we'll make a plan to improve the health of the animals in the ecosystem. Think back to the data tables we looked at before. What do you think it means when the report says the animals aren't growing and thriving in the project area? The animals in the project area have lower weights, so they're not growing and are probably not healthy, not thriving in other words. So the chapter question for these sets of videos will center around this. Why aren't the jaguars and sloths growing and thriving? What have we learned? The ecosystem has changed into a uh, cattle grazing land. The area was reforested and no longer used to raise cattle. However, there are still fewer animals and fewer trees in the project area. The jaguars and the sloths weigh less in the project area than in the healthy area. What questions do you have? You may want to pause the video and jot down some of your questions. Okay, let's see what we have. Natural Resources Rescue planted native plants. Why are they not thriving? Is there a disease or an invasive organisms in the project area that are causing the, the, the plants and animals not to thrive? Have we studied the site long enough to know that it is not recovering? This is a really important question. You should always, as scientists, pause and think about your data and question the data that you've collected. Have we studied the site long enough? Have we uh, interpreted the data in a way that will help us answer the question? Let's keep that one in mind. 
So our second activity out of the three that we will do today is we're gonna take a step back and we're going to observe some ecosystems. In video one, we took a look at a rainforest ecosystem and we thought about this question. What might those living things need to grow in this ecosystem? In the first video, I also suggested that you can just look outside your, your, uh, your, your window and take a look at the ecosystem that you live in. So let's, let's do that with uh, my, my back door. Uh, what might those living things need to grow? What living things do we think we could find in this ecosystem? Yep, plants need water, air, and sunlight. What else? Plants need water, air, sunlight, and nutrients from the soil. I also found uh, lots of birds in my backyard. And so what they need is food, water, and air to breathe. You wanna add something? Yes, you're right, they also need shelter. Let's take a look at this word observe. We've been using it off and on in this video, so let's uh, add it to our list. Observe is to use any of all the five senses to gather information about something, right? Let's think about that. We are very familiar with our five senses, and we also know that we don't always use all of these senses when we study science. But there was an important part of this definition that is going to serve us well in our studies. And it is the gathering information about something part that I want us to, to keep in mind, okay? In your packet, you will be working with several pages. And we're gonna practice doing what ecologists do by observing and discussing scientific drawings of ecosystems. That's the gathering information part. Observe and discuss the illustrations, then record your own ideas by adding labels, writings, notes on the lines, and you can also do both. And these pages are pages 11 through 13. If you notice, I've been popping in and out of the video, just trying to give the maximum space so for, for you to see what's going on here. Here I go. Now that you've taken a look at those pages, and if you haven't, you may wanna pause the video now. What did you observe in each of the ecosystems? How are the ecosystems similar and how are they different? Let's start with some similarities. I made this quick little table and I noticed in all three of the, of the pages in your packet that there are birds, animals, different kinds, plants, different kinds, and there were shelter for the animals. I also couldn't help but to make some inferences and an inference is a conclusion based on our observations. And scientists try to keep those two apart but sometimes it's really difficult. So when it becomes too difficult, we need to recognize that we have both and we're talking about both, okay? So the inferences I've uh, come up with is that because there are birds and animals and plants in all three pictures, there must be air to breathe and there must be food to eat. There were a lot of differences between the, the three videos, right? or not the, the videos, but you know, the packet pages. There were a lot of differences. So I'm just gonna concentrate on the pond ecosystem. Did you find these things? You probably found a whole lot more, right? But I also wanted to notice that I probably made another inference, that the water, the water must not be very deep because there's a frog sitting on a rock, right? How do the different parts of the ecosystem work together? Let's return to the pond. We saw this blackbird flying toward uh, the, the tall grass and there's a nest right here. And so how are these two connected? 
yeah, this nest might, most likely was made out of the tall grass and it's helping to shelter the nest there. What about this turtle? Yeah, it's on a log. So it's using uh, the log that was found in the water to get up out of the water and maybe sun itself. Yes, the, the bird is sitting on a branch in this pond area. It also has a little fish in its mouth that it got out of the water. These are all connected and these are all part of the ecosystem. Our last activity is reading for information and we're gonna start reading this really cool book. You will find information on how to get that uh, online on page 14. This is the, the cover of the book. Matter makes it all up. As we read, we will think about the question, how do animals grow? Let's read the first few pages together. Matter makes it all up. At first glance, an ecosystem may seem like a bunch of unrelated things that just happen to be in the same place. Different kinds of animals are running, swimming, or flying around. Plants are growing in various shapes and sizes. Besides all these living organisms, there are also non-living parts to, in the ecosystem, like rocks, water, and air. How are these parts connected? For example, think of some parts in a Florida swamp ecosystem. What do a rock, a cypress tree, an alligator, and a heron really have in common? Here's a photo that shows few of the organisms in uh, the Everglades. An ecologist, we know who that is, is a scientist who studies ecosystems. To an ecologist, the parts of an ecosystem have something very important in common. In fact, you could say that they are all the same deep down. All the parts of an ecosystem are made of matter. Matter makes up the air, water, soil, rocks, animals, plants, and everything else, including us. Matter is made up of tiny atoms that are too small to see. There are many different kinds of atoms, and these atoms can combine to form a huge number of different kinds of molecules. Individually, atoms and molecules are too small to see. However, Billions and trillions of atoms and molecules together can make up a rock, a tree, a bird, or even an alligator. Hi, think of this. All those millions and trillions of atoms and molecules come together to make up something like you. Let's take a look at page five. It says that everything in the ecosystem is made up of billions and trillions of atoms and molecules that are too small to see. I want you to keep that in mind, okay? As you read page, pages six through 11, think about this question. How do animals grow? Use the photos, diagrams, and captions to help you understand that. All right, end of lesson. It is a wrap. Let's take a look at all the things that we've done today. We've worked with Natural Resource Rescue to replant an area. They gave us data about the area and help us uh, think about the problem that's happening there. We took a step back and did some more observations on three different ecosystems, and we thought about how the different parts were connected together. We started reading a book, Matter Makes It All Up, and we're starting to gather information for our next video. That's all for today. Thank you so much for joining me. And I hope you get a chance to go outside and explore and do some interesting things. Have a good day. Bye.